of state titles. Sherbeck credits a veteran staff with much of his success. The Hornet assistant coaches can count 47 years of Fullerton football experience between them. These men are all part of the Hornet family, a hard-working group of dedicated coaches, supporting personnel and players. Young athletes don't come to Fullerton hoping to win, they come expecting to win. And for 20 years, those expectations have been fulfilled. Now, in 1980, a new generation of Hornets would take the field. Eleven times in the last 20 years, the blue and gold have brought home a conference title. This group was planning to make it an even dozen. In the traditionally tough South Coast Conference, the title chase is an annual dogfight. Every member of the Fullerton team realized that the wins would not come easy. But in 1980, the Hornets would enter the campaign with a traditionally strong offense and a top-notch defense. It didn't take long for word to get out that this edition of the Hornet defense was simply awesome. This season would see Fullerton lead the conference in rushing defense, passing defense, and total defense. Coach Jeff Jesperson unleashed a hard-hitting line charge, spearheaded by all-conference selections Greg Thomas and Dean Porter. Freshman Steve Turnbull was a second-team selection. This unit was tough from the opening whistle, as they held the first three opponents to a combined total of just 20 points. And that included the nation's top-ranked team, Pasadena, who could score but once against this aggregation. Tough as they were against the run, they were doubly effective against the pass. Good pass defense starts with a strong rush, and the line came through, ably supported by a super linebacking core. All-conference pick Ken Fall had a great season, and will move on to Long Beach State in 81, another in a list of more than 340 Fullerton players who have earned scholarships to four-year schools. Paul Emery also provided fine support. It was this kind of defensive play that brought back memories of an incredible 47-game unbeaten streak that Sherbeck put together between 1964 and 1968. The beat goes on. mentor Al Fiola saw to it that Coach Sherbeck didn't have to worry about his secondary. Fiola came to the college the same year as Sherbeck, and together, these two men have watched the emergence of a powerhouse. Fiola has produced nine defensive All-Americans, and his 1980 crew included some exceptional talent. All-American strong safety Paul Moyer was named the conference's defensive player of the year, and played a key role in a pass defense that allowed just 126 yards per game. When you added a fearsome line charge, excellent linebacker play, and a top-notch secondary, you had an unbeatable combination. progressed, it became apparent that the defense was championship quality. But in the wide open South Coast Conference, you've also got to score your share of points. 
and Fullerton has seldom had trouble doing that. Hal Sherbeck had made sure that the 1980 Fullerton offense would feature some legitimate blue chippers. Freshman signal caller Roger Wilson had some powerful weapons at his disposal, and the most explosive was number nine, sophomore sensation Ricky Spencer. The all-conference tailback ran for 719 yards, and his instant acceleration often put him in the opponent's backfield before they knew what hit him. Offensive backfield coach Marv Sampson has played a major role in the Hornet game plan in his 18 years at the college. When you add offensive line coach Glenn Thomas and his eight years of experience, you've got another big reason why Fullerton is so successful on the scoreboard. Rob Teagle wore number 30 and added another dimension to the Hornet ground game. Only a freshman, he looks forward to a big 1981. Sophomore Al Bouchala also made a big contribution. He scored three touchdowns and his 350 yards was the club's third leading total behind Spencer and Teagle. All told, the Hornet ground game accumulated 1,500 yards and 13 touchdowns behind the blocking of a fine offensive line anchored by all-conference center Daryl Deeks. Fullerton has a reputation as a good running team, but most of the newspaper clippings have referred to the passing game with good reason. In 1980, Roger Wilson became the latest in a long line of exceptional Hornet quarterbacks. The freshman passer ably filled the shoes of another Wilson, 1979 starter David Wilson, who has gone on to become a superstar at Illinois. While David was chewing up the Big Ten, Roger was doing likewise in the South Coast Conference. Wilson's ability to maneuver opened up the passing lanes, and Marv Sampson watched while he hooked up with people like Dana Teasley, a second-team All-League pick. Teasley caught 41 passes, good for 700 yards and three touchdowns. He averaged over 17 yards per reception. Teasley is one of three Hornets, moving on to Cal State Northridge. Colby Gibson also enjoyed a great season, and so did all-leaguer Gail Goff and Chris Schirmer. As the season progressed, the Hornets were in the thick of the title chase. After a slow start, Fullerton picked up steam, and the season headed toward its climax. One game for all the marbles. One game to determine the 1980 South Coast Conference champion. The Hornets would be ready. Tonight's opponent would be the Cerritos Falcons. Cerritos was undefeated in conference play, and the Hornets had lost but once, a heartbreaker in the nation's oldest J.C. rivalry against Santa Ana. But Hal Schurbeck knew that a victory tonight would mean a title. The Hornet offense was aware of the same fact. Early in the game, the Fullerton running attack probed the Cerritos defense. Ricky Spencer brought the ball to the 30, and then Roger Wilson and Dana Teasley came up with a big play. Wilson uncorked a 70-yard bomb, and the stunned Falcons could only watch in disbelief as Teasley crossed the end zone strike. The Hornets had drawn first blood. With the lead in hand, the defense went to work. Cerritos was off to their best start in 15 years, but you'd never know that Fullerton was an underdog from the way the first quarter was going. Getting the ball back, Wilson went to work. A short pass to Rob Teagle moved the ball inside the Cerritos 40. There, a quick toss to Dana Teasley brought the ball within field goal range. As the second period began, Dana Teasley accounted for three more points, this time with his foot, with a perfect 46-yard field goal. 
trailing nine to nothing, the frustrated Falcons found themselves going absolutely nowhere. Fullerton boasted 13 off-conference selections in 1980, and these guys were making their presence felt on both sides of the football. When the defense forced a Falcon punt, the Fullerton running game took charge. The passing attack had already accounted for six, and it was time to even the score. The Fullerton ball carriers attacked the De Cerritos line with a vengeance. Quarterback Wilson did the honors himself, and the underdog Hornets held a 16 to nothing lead. If the Falcons had any hopes of a miraculous comeback before the half, they could forget it. The final seconds of the first half belonged to the Fullerton defense. Although Cerrito scored early in the third quarter, cutting the lead to nine, the comeback was short-lived. Fullerton stormed right back, and the passing attack, running game, and special teams all played a part. Dana Teasley, who nailed 10 of 12 field goal attempts during the season, connected again, and the Hornets had regained the momentum. It was time for the defense to take command. After Cerritos was halted, the offense prepared to drive one more nail into the coffin. Tight end Gail Goff latched on to a Roger Wilson aerial and then did his impression of a runaway freight train, plowing into the end zone amidst a heap of blue jerseys. Teasley's conversion gave the Hornets an 18-point advantage. Late in the quarter, the flickering Cerritos hopes flared briefly when the Falcons moved inside the five, first and goal. Four times they tried the heart of the Hornet line. Four times they failed. As the game entered its final minutes, the Hornet offense prepared to supply the coup de grace. Once again, the magic word was balance, as all cylinders of the offensive juggernaut functioned smoothly, moving relentlessly downfield. Dana Teasley hit his third field goal of the evening, and the Fullerton faithful prepared to celebrate a well-deserved South Coast Conference crown and an avocado bowl berth. And even as they celebrated, the defense was administering a beating that Cerritos would not soon forget. When the gun sounded, Hal Sherbeck's Fullerton Hornets were the 1980 South Coast Conference champs. They finished the season with seven victories, giving Hal Sherbeck 153 lifetime wins at Fullerton. What a great way to cap two decades of excellence. And next year, Hal Sherbeck, his staff, and players look forward to the beginning of yet another sensational season. Decade number three of Fullerton College Football. The winning tradition.